<laughs> so what's the difference between the, the different kilns? Um, the electric kiln has a lot of oxygen in it, so that's an oxidation firing, and I'm starving this kiln of oxygen. It's called a reduction firing, and if you have iron spots in your clay, you'll see those will come out during the firing. Um, the glazes seem to be a little softer, different effect on the glazes completely in, in a gas kiln. And I was uh, just taught to fire in gas, so that's the way I went, and uh, I enjoy doing it. Rather than wood, is there a... Well, you can fire in wood, but then you need a kiln outside and a lot of wood. Mm. And so you got to stoke that for about 24 hours. So this time of the year, people don't want to see any smoke outside. So, yeah, it's not something I've ever done. But with pottery, that's another aspect of it. You know, the experimenting with glazes, wood firing, salt fired. Um, so there's just... I've uh, never heard of a salt fired. Yeah, they actually mm -hmm. just take the kiln and, and during the firing, they're adding some salt to it. So it almost will make the, um, you'll see the salt will form on the pots, and it'll almost create salt runny pots, right? But it mm -hmm. also coats salt on your shelves and wrecks your shelves in the kiln quite a bit. <laughs> Not too many people do that. And, um, so yeah, a wood firing would, would, a kiln would be nice, but it's not something I'm going to ever build. Yeah. So, you know, outside, a lot of them will go up the hill and they put them in different chambers and the heat climbs up. Mm. But it takes a lot of wood not to fire them. Yeah. And there's pit firings for the decorative pots, which are just dig a hole in the ground and put the pieces in with sawdust or on the bottom and wood all over it, just so you get the blackness of the wood burns around the pots. And uh, Raku pots is fired outside in a kiln. Fired quickly to about 1800 degrees, and I grab them out with tongs and put them into a bucket oh. with leaves and sawdust. That all catches on fire from the heat of the pot. I put a lid on it, so it gives you a lot of coppery colors on the pot because the glazes have copper in them. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, you can see those on the top. They're more of the decorative, one of a kind pieces. You'll never get two the same. Mm -hmm. Whereas your stoneware, you don't really want any surprises. You want people add on to sets, they might buy mugs and then come back for teapots, so they want it to match. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, but some, a lot of people want matching things. And the, the Raku pots, um, how are they made? They well, they're made the same way. I mean, you can make them on the wheel, mm -hmm. but again, they're fired outside in a kiln that gets a little different clay. They're made to take the, the shock of heating and cooling. Okay. Fast, so you get more of an artsy and experiment yeah. with them. So again, is it they're fired really fast. So I can take that up to eighteen hundred degrees in ten oh. to fifteen minutes. Grab it out with tongs, steel tongs, and I put it into a, a bucket with leaves and sawdust. Well, that pot's red hot, so everything catches on fire. Mm -hmm. Copper, when it's reduced in there with a lid on it, so it doesn't get any more oxygen, you get these copper colors. And where, where uh, it starts getting oxygen, you'll get more greens in the pots, because copper goes green when it's oxidized. Okay. Oh. You get, uh, and these pots are what I call a stagger-fired pot. So when, when I trim the excess clay off of the pot, it's kind of like a piece of leather. It's called leather hard. And I burnish it by rubbing it really smooth to give it a real nice smooth surface on it. Then that pot is put into another bigger pot, and in between the two I'm putting sawdust and salt, and you can experiment with different things. Put a lid on it, fire it outside of my raku kiln for about an hour and a half, a little slower because it's just my stoneware clay. Mm -hmm. So that burning that's going on in between the two pots gets onto the unglazed pot. There's no glaze in there, so that, that's just from the sawdust, the black. Oh, wow. So again, you'll never get two the same. Yeah. But the time consuming, a lot of work burnishing them smooth. That's neat. So yeah, you got to charge a little bit more for those ones. But People will like them if they want a one-of-a-kind piece that no one else has got. Yeah. And that's the nice thing about raccoon. It gives you a little bit of a break from doing the everyday stone or day yeah. after day. I usually fire it late fall or early spring or throughout the winter. Because I do make a little smoke, but it's not like I'm billowing out clouds of smoke or anything. Yeah. It's not as much as a wood stove or anything. Because I keep it to a minimum. I don't use that many leaves. And once it all burns down in there, you've got a lid on it. So mm -hmm. once in a while you open the lid, you'll get a poof of smoke, but not that much. I just stay away from it this time of the year. Like because of forest fires? Well, or? I mean, I don't think I would start a fire because well, there's anything blowing around. But it's but people concerns stuff, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, and that. I mean, I don't want to start a fire. So yeah. It's the worst nightmare I think you could have with a fire <laughs> going on. So, but it, it's pretty safe. It, it's done in an old.